Hello everyone, this is Andy from the Pixel Pub, and I'm here with my top 10 games of 1992. Okay, if you haven't seen some of these videos before that I've done, I've done since 1988. Uh, my criteria is that it has it's been released in America, um, and console games. Like, I, don't, I didn't really play any PC games, I didn't really get out to arcades that much. Um, so, that's my criteria. So let's go to number 10! Okay, number 10 is a game I do not have physically, sadly. Um, it's a game I see out and about from time to time, and I'm like, I should get that, I should get that. I love that game. This is a great game. Uh, but the price isn't always right for me. Um, I'm always on the hunt for a deal. But uh, it is Contra 3, the Alien Wars on the Super Nintendo. I have the Super Nintendo Classic gear. Uh, this is what I played a lot of it on. I played it, you know, emulation back in the day. But, uh, yeah, it's probably my favorite Contra game. Um, I One of my favorite things about it is that you start with basically like the automatic rifle thing. You just hold down the button, you can shoot. Uh, versus like having to like find it in like Contra and Super C and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, what a wild game. What a wild, like kind of launch game for the Super Nintendo, like, uh, just showing off all the things it could do, like, when they're, like, halfway through the first level, that fucking jet flies by and drops a bunch of bombs, and now you're, the whole level's on fire, and you have to dodge fireballs and not touch the floor because it's on fire, and you're still shooting aliens and all this other stuff, and then the next level, you're, this top-down, like, you know, Contra 1 had that type of stuff, too, like, with behind the back. And this is top-down, and you have to, like, it's got the mode 7 and you're using L and R to you know, change the directions of where you're shooting at. It was just, it was a wild game at the time. Um, just a whole lot of fun. Uh, <clears throat> it's eating me alive right now talking about it that I do not have it physically. Uh, but maybe in the future, maybe I'll hunt it down. Number 9, top 10 games in 1992, is another 3. That is Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project on the NES. Um, Kind of a late era NES game. Uh, spoilers for the next list. Lists going in the future of the years. There's gonna be more NES games, but uh, definitely late era Konami NES game here. They were still trying to milk that uh, Turtle Stone for all they could, and they made a, a damn good game here with Manhattan Project with a nice little beat 'em up. Um, I just recently did uh, my top five Turtles games. Not near the top. Uh, just because the uh, the whole situation with the the big move that you can do, you hit A and B at the same time, and it like takes your health. That, that type of stuff I just don't like. Just let me do the move. Um, I said that in the last video. But that doesn't take away from it too much because it still is a fun beat-em-up. Bright, colorful graphics. Great music. It had the soundtrack on vinyl. It's, it's just a fun little thing. Just... 90s through and through right here 1992 distilled in the game is probably this game right here if you ever have the time order yourself a nice little personal pan pizza pop this in the nes and have a good have a good saturday night okay number eight is a beat em up that i've sampled a little bit uh in the past and i've just recently picked up a physical version it's on the sega genesis and that is streets of rage 2. now streets of rage 2 I think for a lot of people, it's probably the pinnacle of beat-em-ups, uh, especially if you were a Sega fan back in the day. Uh, but yeah, I picked this up, I think last year around this time, at a uh, little, like, swap meet, flea market type of thing, just retro games in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, and dude had it for a good price, and I picked it up, and I was able to, for the first time ever, pop it into a real Sega Genesis, and give it a shot and man it lived up to the hype it's a really good game uh it's definitely better than the first one the first one always to me is always kind of yeah, it's good this one's better in a lot of ways and i love that fucking artwork i love a sega genesis game in the box and this i don't know i should do a top 10 sega genesis boxes because this would be up there it's like number two or one basically but uh it's a super fun game to play, super simple. Like, if any of y'all play to beat them up, y'all know. Y'all know. And, uh, yeah, that's Streets of Rage 2, number 8. Okay, number 7 is also a game I regrettably do not own physically. Uh, it is Soul Blazer on the Super Nintendo. 
It is part of the Quintet Quintology, as far as I understand it. Um, it's the first one. There's Soul Blazer, Illusion of Gaia, Terra Enigma, and some other ones after that. I think it even goes to the PS1 era. There's Grand Stream Saga. Was that part of it too? I think I had that game on the PS1 a long time ago. Anyway, Soul Blazer is an action RPG that I played uh, on our old YouTube channel. I played all the way through it, various different videos, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's, uh, it was definitely one of those things that, you know, it had the old school charm. Like, there's, you know, certain things. It's like, why is this a thing? But easily forgiven because it was a fun little, uh, fun little RPG where you like to like build back towns. You go into dungeons. You basically unlock a little glyph, and then a building would rise in the in the town that you're trying to rebuild. And people would rise, and you you talk to dogs, and they're like slugs who race for their whole lives. And it's a it's a fucking fun little thing. And um, I wish I had it physically. Uh, there is a pawn shop not too far away from me that has it under glass, and you could buy it. I think it's like eighty dollars, but it's it's nasty, y'all. I should go take a picture. I probably won't, but it's got like a big yellow sticker on top of the label, and that's no one wants that. No one wants that. No one wants that. But yeah, Soul Blazer is great. Number seven, check it out. Okay, number six is. A game that I played a ton of when I was a kid. I still have my original version here. And that is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, this is the one I originally had when I was a kid. Because I have stickers on it. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, there's one up here too. These stickers, I remember they came from... Does anyone remember the cartoon Exo Squad? And the uh, figures that came with it? It was like some type of like... Humans versus Homo Superior. Like there was like these... They made these like slaves. And, and, anyway... Uh, Sonic 2, uh, another personal story about Sonic 2, I remember getting my Sega Genesis, uh, it came with Sonic 1, and I got some other games, X-Men, Captain America, uh, first off, and there was a thing, like a little mail away thing, where, I don't, I don't, I can't remember if you had to pay money or not, I was 8 years old or whatever, uh, but, you sent this thing away, probably with money, it had to be with money. But you got Sonic 2 and a year's subscription of the Sega version of Nintendo Power. It was called Visions. Sega Visions. And I got that in the mail. And it took forever to get Sonic 2. I remember I, I was so young, it probably was like six weeks or whatever. But to me, it was it might have been might as well have been six years. But I finally got it. And I like this game a whole lot better than Sonic 1. Uh, still not my favorite Sonic game. But man, at the time... It just blew me away. So many levels, uh, so many like different codes you could put in. Like you could put in like the debug code and like just run around a level as a ring or like anything that in the level. It was it was bizarre. And then you could like load up the level select and there'll be levels that were in the level select that you couldn't actually go to. It was it was such a weird thing at the time. And you know, I entered a su supersonic. You can get all the chaos emeralds and you know jump up hit jump again as long as you have 50 rings and basically be invincible running around and he'd basically be like super saiyan it was a uh, man it was a fun little time sonic 2 okay number six is the game boy's first appearance on this list that's kirby's dreamland so this game i got for christmas i believe in 1992 along with batman returns figures a lot of batman returns figures uh because i think that's the year batman returns came out and uh this game stood out to me because it is uh, very easy. Uh, if y'all been watching some of these lists, videos like that, y'all know I love, a, I love an easy game. <laughs> I will play through it. And when I was, you know, eight years old, I loved games that I could beat. And I could beat this, like, with 100% regularity. It was, it's a very easy game and fun. It has uh, fun music. It has one of my favorite, like, credits themes in any video games. It's, it's a fun little time. Uh, it's like five or six levels. Just Kirby's first game. Couldn't have made a better impression. Maybe a Kirby fan for life. So yeah, it's a fun little platformer. That's Kirby's Dream Land number five. Okay, next is number four, which is also a four, which I also talked about in my top five Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. And that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. Uh, yes, 
According to my research, that Konami did release Turtles 3 and Turtles 4 at the same time. Or not at the same time, but on the same year. Uh, Turtles 3 on the NES, Turtles 4 on the Super NES. Obviously, Space Stuff, the arcade game, they did not call it Turtles 4. They just called it Turtles in Time. Uh, but when they released it on Super Nintendo, they gave it Turtles 4. Sure, why not? But, um, okay, my Turtles list, it was my second favorite Turtles game. It is my fourth favorite game of uh, 1992. Uh, it is just a fun little beat em up. I said it in, um, I think I said it in the Turtles video, but it was one of those games that I emulated to death back in the day and just played the snot out of it. And I loved it. I loved the, the whole aesthetic of it, the graphics, the music, the, the style, the, the little uh, sound bites before each level, the Big Apple, 3 a.m., all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Turtles in Time. Just an incredible game. Please check it out. It's number four on the list of 1992 games. Okay, number three is a Game Boy game. Another Game Boy game. It is Super Mario Land 2. Now, I love this game. Uh, I can't... I, I think it's a shame that Nintendo has basically forgotten about this game a lot. I mean, I think... I'm pretty sure it's probably on Switch Online, the whole Game Boy stuff, if you subscribe to that. But... I don't know. Why didn't they ever do a little remake of it? Why is there not a GBA version with fun, colorful graphics? Why did they do a Why didn't they do a Super Mario All Stars style revamp of you know one, two, and three? You know, Wireland. This they're all great games. Super Mario Land Two is incredible. It has like all the fun stages, the little the big Mario toy that you go through, the whale and the tree, and you go to space, and this the intro, introduction of Wario, and they had that fun commercial where uh, Wario's hypnotizing you and it's weird obey me Wario I am your master Mario is your enemy oh. uh, yeah you get the six golden coins you unlock the cut castle castle of Wario and you fight him and it's just what an amazing game what an amazing game should have been number one I'm looking at the rest of them no it shouldn't it's uh it's number three for a reason but yeah super cool it has fun new power-ups like the the rabbit ears where you can like fly across. It's got the Halloween stage. How can I forget the Halloween stage? It's got like the Jason mask with the 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 knife through them and you jump on them and it's, it's uh, uh what a good game. What a good game. What a fun little romp. Super Mario Land 2 at number three. Okay, number two. It's also a Mario game, but maybe not what you're thinking. It is Super Mario Kart. The very first Mario Kart in the series that's still going to this day, still selling millions and millions and millions of copies. Still probably the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still probably the best-selling game on the Switch. Um, this is where it started right here, and I remember my brother having this. It's, it's not his copy. I had to re, rebuy it, but uh, and we would play it in his room, and I was just kind of blown away by it. It was the first time that, for me, it's my first racing game I ever played. Like, there wasn't like that much on the NES outside of like RC Pro-Am, which was just like, you know isometric perspective it was it was hard to look at that and just say oh that's racing that's that's i can picture that as a racing game but this the camera's behind the back you can see the track ahead of you you can see the track below you if you're playing uh if you're playing single player because the game's always split screen but uh and you got all the it, this game introduced all of it you got the the items and stuff that you could pick up that you use to fuck with other players and you know, some people say that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. I like having that type of fun. But, um, and a lot of people will tell you, I've heard this over the years, that, you know, your first Mario Kart's your favorite. I don't think that's true. Uh, this was my first Mario Kart. It's the very first one I played it. It's not my favorite one. Uh, I don't think, not even close, really. But for 1992, man, this game kicks ass. And it's still fun today. If you ever have a chance to play Super Mario Kart, go for it. Number two, 1992. Okay, number one. It is a big one. It is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Now, I can't imagine a game, top 10 games or best games of 1992 not having this game on the list. And it probably, it like, it's number, number one. It has to be number one. It has to be number one. It's amazing. Um, it's one of those games that I, like, I, I didn't have a Super Nintendo. My brother did. But I didn't get a chance to, like, I love Zelda and Zelda 2, you know loved Zelda 2 on the NES and basically skipped the Super Nintendo 
and went straight to the N64 and loved Ocarina of Time. But there was this gap here. I just, I never played Link to the Past. And when I got into emulation and stuff like that, I was like, I need to play it, I need to play it. And I played the snot out of it. It was incredible, but I didn't actually end up playing it to completion until I played it on our old YouTube channel. Um, and it, man, it still hold up then. That was only a few years ago. It still holds up now. These Zelda games, they must have put a lot of work into it because, my God, they it, this stuff is timeless. This stuff, like, going through these dungeons and all the dungeon design, the world design, the items that you get, all this other stuff, it's just... It's timeless. The music, the graphics, it all holds up. It all holds up to this day. It just Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past is the number one game in Night Time. And it's it's kind of not even close. Like I, I I talked about nine other games here. This one runs away with it by far. Okay, that's been my top ten games in Night Time ninety two. I've been Andy from the Pixel Pub. Uh, if you have any other games that I've missed, if you think you have a better list than me. Put it in the comments. Please like and subscribe. All that fun stuff. I love making these videos. I'm going to keep on going until I reach this year right here. Or, sure. Uh, but yeah, we're reaching a golden age for me, for video games. Uh, the 90s is going to go, God, for another 10 years. Like I can gush about these games and just go off the top of my head for a very long time. I love these uh, fucking retro games. I have a big ass shrine to them in my little office here. But yeah, I'm Andy from the Pixel Pub. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Like I said before, you know. Please. Uh, yeah, Andy, Pixel Pub. Peace out.